prevention of hyperbilirubinemia associated with isoimmune hemolytic disease. So as we know, the most common reason for isoimmune hemolytic disease is Rh-negative uh, mother with the Rh-positive baby. ABO incompatibility is common, but it's not as severe in most of the cases, and it's difficult to predict which baby will have. So if you have a family history and you have a setting, you have to be more careful. There is no specific screening needed unless the baby is noted to have early jaundice, we will discuss later. So prevention of hyperbilirubinemia begins in the pregnancy by recognizing and treating women who are at risk of developing antibodies to the red cell antigens which can lead to hemolytic disease in the newborn. So we also call it as isoimmune hemolytic disease. If the maternal antibody screen is positive or unknown because the mother did not have prenatal antibody screening, the infant should have a direct antiglobulin or DAT test. The infant's blood type should be determined as soon as possible so we can categorize the risk uh, of jaundice or the pathological jaundice having uh, ri rising fast in the baby. So we should do this on either cord or peripheral blood. So there is a nice uh, flow diagram that you can refer to. So the starting point is basically all the newborns and then you review whether there is maternal antibody screen done or not. If it is done, you look at whether it is positive and if it is uh, negative, you can follow the guidelines as for any other baby. If the antibody screen is positive or if the maternal screen uh, was not done, the newborn baby should have the Coombs test as we discussed earlier and the blood type should be done as soon as possible. If the infant is DAT positive, then we have to go to the high risk. If it is negative, then it goes to a normal management. So even if the baby is DAT positive, you ask these questions because there are certain babies who have developed uh, this DAT test positive due to the mother receiving anti-D. So remember that anti-D is also an immunoglobulin uh, against the blood group and so it will be picked up on this test. Uh, so if the infant is DAT positive to only anti-D, the mother received RH immunoglobulin during pregnancy. You might remember that most of the mothers receive it around 26 to 28 weeks of pregnancy or following any handling uh, like fetal rotation and so on. The mother is known not to be anti-RHD positive before the RHIG. That means she is not sensitized with the previous pregnancy. If any of these are uh, abnormal, then you would consider the baby's uh, DAT as significant. But if all these are true, then you can again assume the baby can return to the normal guidelines. Of course, you would monitor the baby uh, for jaundice. You would do the screening as you would for any other newborn before discharge, but you don't need to be intensively doing it as in this case. If the infant has a hyperbilirubinemia uh, neurotoxicity risk factor, measure the TCB or TSB immediately and then every four hours for two times. If it is stable, then you go on to every 12 hours three times. Uh, so the baby might need phototherapy in these situations and if the baby uh, develops a significant jaundice which needs escalation, you might consider IV immunoglobulin as we will discuss later in this group.